Enjoy 1% merchant commission when you accept Lanka Pay cards. Contact these banks today. The central bank's uh, policy interest rates were increased further, uh, aimed at uh, containing inflation pressures while uh, ensuring macroeconomic uh, stability in the period ahead. So, uh, in arriving at that decision, the monetary board uh, weighed the impact of uh, tighter monetary conditions on uh, overall economic activity, including the uh, uh, impact on micro, small and medium scale enterprises and the financial sector performance, among others, against uh, any far-reaching uh, adverse consequences of uh, any further escalation of price pressures across uh, all sectors of the economy uh, in the near term. The worsening economic crisis has forced the central bank to further tighten the monetary policy, to curtail the soaring inflation to ensure macroeconomic stability. The monetary board at its meeting on Wednesday has decided to increase the standing deposit facility rate and the standing lending facility rate of the central bank by 100 basis points to 14.50% and 15.50% respectively with immediate effect. The latest hike comes three months after the tightest stance in April when policy rates were increased by 7%. The inflation is running over 50% and as per our projections, it might even go close to 70%. From the central bank's point of view, the major concern here is to address inflation and expectations going forward. We hope to bring it down to a reasonable level as soon as possible, central bank governor Dr. Nandalal Weerasinghe told journalists yesterday. With the higher than expected escalation of headline inflation recently and the increased persistence of high inflation in the period ahead, the board was of the view that a further monetary policy tightening would be necessary to contain any buildup of adverse inflation expectations. In arriving at this decision, the board weighed the impact of tighter monetary conditions on overall economic activity, including the micro, small, and medium-scale businesses, and the financial sector performance, among others, against far-reaching adverse consequences of any escalation of price pressures across all sectors of the economy in the near term. Um, as you all know, inflation is running now over, I think, uh, almost 50%. And that, that might even go up in our inflation expectation. I, the forecast that we are seeing might go up to uh, even close to 70%. So here, the major concern from the central bank point of view, the first priority is to address inflation and inflation expectations going forward and bring down the inflation to a, at least to a reasonable level uh, as soon as possible, sooner the better. So because the, if you look at the impact of inflation on segments of people, first, the hardest hit of high inflation would be the poor and vulnerable. The other ones would be able to find extremely difficult uh, to maintain their living conditions in a very high inflation environment. So that's where I think the one recommendation, even with the IMF program, is to support the poor and vulnerable for them to at least survive in this kind of high inflation environment. If inflation goes beyond uh, without our control, or say for example if it's going to go up again even over 100%, that, we, that, that is basically termed as a hyperinflation situation. We certainly don't want to have that kind of situation. If we are going to see that situation, no one will be able to do any businesses, any kind of impact, and poor will be mostly hit. And even the small and medium enterprises, the next layer of impact of high interest rates and high inflation. Obviously, we also understand the high in increasing interest rates will have impact on small and medium enterprises and businesses. That's where I think uh, at least just to give them some support, uh, we I think today announced in terms of people who are were taken some loans earlier and those who were under debt moratoriums and uh, we have given some guidance to the banks to consider their impact 
and their ability to pay and on that basis uh, we have given some guidance from the on the board approved it uh, last week and we are i think already issued the guidelines to the banks how to address we have asked banks to look at their clients especially SMEs and help them uh, especially the SMEs those who are under debt moratoriums earlier including tourism and other SMEs all will be coming under the same guidelines and they will uh, we have given some guidance and Mr. Fernando will uh, give you more details on that package. That is how that on the impact of monetary policy, uh, the increasing interest rates, how we are trying to at least minimize the impact of a small enterprise. So obviously we don't expect this kind of situation. Uh, any businesses may not be taking new loans at these very high rates. It is impact on the existing loan book that they have to service. That is where some guidance we are given how to smooth out this operation. And obviously, on the overall macro policy point of view, in this kind of situation, where it's not only monetary policy that can that, that will have impact on this situation. It will have to be a combination of overall macro policy package, including structural reforms. For example, now we are doing our part from the monetary policy and we are doing our part from the financial system stability part in terms of uh, looking after SMEs and others. But the, the, this puzzle will be completed once the fiscal policy package also implemented, fully implemented, and also some of the reforms, those are long due in state-owned enterprises, for example, Portorian Corporation, Elixir Board, other areas where those have been making huge losses and becoming a burden to the public, becoming a burden to the general treasury, those will also have to be uh, implemented parallelly, preferably at the same time. Then obviously whole complete package would be implemented, then whole situation, this the macro imbalances can only be addressed with the combination of all these policies. For more latest news, subscribe to FTTV.